You've heard of yard art before. Well, our next guest has turned her whole yard into art with plants. Doris Weekly, we are so glad to have you on the show. Your yard is spectacular. Walk us through this wonderful piece of artwork you've created. As you come in, uh, I garden under a maple tree, which is the hardest place to garden, but you can do it. Uh, by picking your spot. And most of those up there are native plants, which is what I started with up there, and then with the exotics. And then I had to go with the pots. Pots are great. Pots. And then we did put a, a swing up there for a sitting area. And my husband would go up after golf and read. So that was always a good spot for him. And um, I've noticed you incorporate a lot of hostas in your pots. Is that on purpose? That's on purpose because uh, the hostas uh, do not do well in my garden because of the underground critters, the moles, the voles, and the chipmunks. So I put them in pots, they get some out of the clay soil, it gets them up, and the roots get cold enough in the winter time that they do well. Doris, talk to me about the tree that's the centerpiece for your shade garden, because it's got its own personality. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's got roots, which you have to plant between. Uh, it's got the limbs that are really pretty when they go up, so I had to give them hanging plants. So I put all of my uh, orchids in the summertime hanging from the tree and then I take them inside in the winter time and they bloom so it does it's it's a it's a good shade but it's getting a little old well but the orchids renew it don't you think yes, it gives it do. new life and it does. and 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 it's just kind of interesting to hang things from trees like that it is and not only that when i first bring them out uh, of the house they are still in full bloom so i only have one that's got a bloom on it now but then i'll cut it off but and then in the fall i'll take them in and they will bloom which is uh, i find it that i don't have to do a lot of work with these orchids because i not an orchid person but I just love them. <laughs> they're they're self-sustaining. Yes they are. And then you have a hibiscus that came up as a, a volunteer. You did not plant this. I did not. There are several that's in the back. One being Diane which is the white one and then um, there are the pinks and the purples and for some reason everything mutated and it came up with variegated white leaves. So I took a picture of it, took it to Don Shadows when I was on a buying trip, and he told me, he says, do not dig it up. If anyone wants to, a cutting, let them take a cutting, but do not dig it up until it's older or until it gets established. This is a 200 foot border going from one end to the other end of the garden. And over time, uh, I started out just as a sunny border and over time it's getting a lot of shade so you transition your plants to what you have in your garden. If you have shade you've got to put a shade plant there. You put it in the sun it's just going to wither. If it's a sun plant you put it in the shade and it gets really too leggy. Mm -hmm. So you plant with what you have in your garden not making your garden what you want it to be outside of nature. So. And it, it, that would be good advice for somebody that maybe is just starting to put some equity into their garden, is to utilize what you've got and 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 propagate things and and spread out your plants throughout your garden. Exactly, and and you know it, when we first start our garden, we want one of everything. Right. And I have killed more plants by getting one of everything. And so as I age, my garden ages, so I have more than one of everything now to show off. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bush, it's a shrub, but I wanted to limb it up and make lollipops with it. So I take off all the bottom limbs and I limb it up and after it blooms and it forms its bud up there after the bloom, then I will go back and I'll make lollipops of them so that next year they are still in the lollipop standard form. And it nice. takes, it, you know, it takes time to do those things, but if you're a gardener, you'll do it. Okay, Doris, talk to me about your cannas and how you've paired them color-wise. 
with the ruby slippers yes. and it's showing its colors right now which is beautiful and it goes really well with the montana canna which also has that red tinge on the in it in the uh, leaf so that looks really good together and then on the other side of that is the tetrapana which is the rice paper plant that has huge leaves and by the end of the summer both of those two plants will be above the fence. And and you say you like big leafed plants. I do because I look at my garden from a distance. It's not one that uh, that's a courtyard garden where you see every plant. It's from a distance and you see colors, you see leaves, you see what's going on. Uh, you see the tall, you see the medium, you see the low plants. So it is, it's a um, a distance garden. And and your tiger lilies are huge. They really are. And once the sun comes out and they all start blooming, it's just one big orange blob out there. I love that. Yes, I do too. And, and as you come on down through your garden, you have got some spectacular pairings. It's like putting together an outfit. So, so you've got all kinds of different things put together that are in the same color family. Yes, and if you notice if something is pink, but it also has orange with it, use it with orange, which is the uh, uh, purple cone flower. It has an orange center. Why not put orange daylilies with it? Because it brings out the orange of that. And if nature puts them together, it's not gaudy. Absolutely. And your hydrangeas have really uh, spectacularly put on a show this year. Yes, we had the rain that we had in the spring made those annabelles where the blooms are this big and of course the rain beats them down but you can still see that there are big blooms on those big heads so and you know that's a good point that sometimes rain does beat things down but it pops back as soon as the sun comes out there'll be a different looking garden isn't that nice yes so so uh, let's swing on around here because you've got something interesting around another tree that I want to talk about. Okay, this is the hellebore, and this is the photius, which is a stinking hellebore, and it starts blooming in the winter with apple green blooms. They're really good to bring in the house, but at the same time, it just sparks up a winter landscape. Okay, so behind this great tree, you have your she shed. Oh yes, a gift from my husband. And my husband and our son put it together during the quarantine of the COVID-19. So it was really a labor of love for them. And for me, it's been a delight. It's, it's just kind of a little fun thing to add interest to your oh, garden oh, as well. Oh yes, and this was my work area and my compost area. So this really cleaned it up and it made me get serious about cleaning up an area. Too. There you go. Well, and talking about uh, something that some people might clean up, you've got this most interesting table with moss on it that I love. Oh yes, and that's an accident. If you'd wanted moss to grow on this table, it probably wouldn't have happened, right? Probably not because I didn't seed it to happen. <laughs> Nature gave it to me because it was the right place, the right rain, the right shade, everything just happened and I did not clean it off. I love that. And close to that is one of my favorite things, the voodoo plant. Oh yes, it's, it's the stinkingest thing you'll ever want to smell of when it blooms. It's quite interesting. And if you don't have it in your garden, you really need to look for it and at least put one in it to watch it grow. So Doris, one of your favorite activities you were telling me is sharing plants, right? Yes, I do love to propagate plants. Uh, and then I love to share them with my friends and they share plants with me. So it's, you know, it's just a nice thing to do for your garden to live in someone else's garden. Absolutely, and you've given us a wonderful afternoon here in your garden and it's absolutely stunning and we appreciate you sharing it with us and our viewers. Thank you, my pleasure. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.